Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm just so blessed bringing God's truth. Listen, truth, truth is all that matters. And you know what Jesus said? I am the truth. Praise <laughs> God. So someone said, I'm looking for truth. Hey, don't look any further. Get Jesus. So what do you mean get Jesus? Believe in him. What do you mean believe in him? Approach him. Receive him into your life. Now, if you're listening to me and you are not born again, you're already walking in a lie. Believe me, you are walking. And you know the amazing thing? Many people would discover they've been walking in a lie and it may just be too late. So why don't you switch today and accept Jesus into your heart and, and begin to walk in the truth? If you want to do so, I'm ready to pray for you even right now before we start the broadcast. He said, what do I do? Put, place your hand on your chest and say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the truth. I want to walk in truth from today. So I open my heart to receive you right now. I receive your Holy Spirit that you have given. And let him dwell in me. And let him begin to guide me into all truth. The truth of my life. The truth of everything I will have to deal with. I receive him right now. Thank you, Jesus, for this blessing. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, that's it. Let me tell you this. is a conscious thing that you have done. So what does it mean? Begin from right now, acknowledging the Lord in all that you do. Praise God. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, I would really like to hear from you because I have something I would like to send across to you. Praise God. So, oh Lord, we bless you for our hearts are open for your truth right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man. So that I was talking to you yesterday about our heart, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, keep or guard your heart with all diligence. You know what that means. Put everything at your disposal to guard your heart. Now, why would he say that? Because, see life, the devil is in this world. And what's he after? I'll tell you this. He is after your heart. Listen, Satan knows the principle of life. He knows. Say, so how did he know? God taught him. Praise <laughs> God. Hey, you, think, you think when he lost his place with God, God just switched off his memory and everything. No, come on now. The guy knows. He knows, the, 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 he knows how God functions. There are certain things about God that Satan knows. He, he knows certain operation of God. But you know the thing he doesn't know? <laughs> now, that's the advantage we have over him and there is nothing he can do about it. He said, what is it? I'll tell you. He doesn't know what God is going to tell you today. Praise <laughs> God. I love that. I love that. Praise God. See, let me tell you this. Oh, <laughs> Satan may know that God have called you to be a preacher. Yeah. He may know that God have called you to be the best medical doctor in the area. Or a teacher or um, uh, uh, a military man or the, the president of your nation. Whatever it is. And how, how did he know? How would he get to know? Not because he was there when God was saying it. No, he would get to know it by prophecy. See, when, when prophecies come, you, we talk. You know, we li people listen. See, there are demons all around us, praise God. Yeah, there are. You can't drive them away. You, you, can't, you can't stay in an environment where there is no demon. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, the fact that they are not harmful doesn't mean they are not there. Some of them are just there, you know, to spy on you. And Because, see, he is always trying to find out what God is up to next. Because he doesn't know. He knows that, look, if God is going to get this thing done, then it has to, it will go like this and like that. 
See, for example, he knew that a savior was going to be born. But he didn't know when God was going to give the command for the savior to be born. So that's why when Jesus was born, he was a bit confused. Because <laughs> he, he didn't know when the command came to Mary. You see, because, yes, an angel may, may have appeared to Mary, even if an angel appears to Mary physically. See, no demon will hear what the angel said. Because that communication is heart to heart. I said, really? Yeah. You remember Paul on, on his way to Damascus, right? When, when the light from heaven struck him. What did Paul say when he was giving the testimony? He said, the people, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The people that were journeying with him, they saw the light, but they did not hear the voice. Meanwhile, to Paul, it was like Saul was speaking to him audibly. Paul, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting the army? It is hard for you to kick against the brick. You know, you, you feel everybody. Wow. Everybody, what happened? What happened? We don't know. But something just happened. So, yeah. You guys didn't hear that? Hear what? Somebody was talking to me. No, we didn't hear anything. This is what he said. And how can you have this lengthy conversation? We didn't hear anything. That's what happened. See? That's what happened. So you might think God is talking to you from heaven, you know, and then the sound is traveling from heaven down to the earth. But nobody else hears except those the voice is meant for. Now, this is where we beat Satan's hands down. <laughs> now, that's why I always tell you this. Always seek to hear the voice of God. Because let me tell you something. You, you can... Eh, ah, how, how can we communicate this truth that it will sit properly in your heart? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, Satan can know that you're on a journey. For example, you are leaving the city of Abuja and then you're going to Lagos. And then he plans that, oh, this guy... I know he's going to he's going to by road, right? He's going to pass through this place and, and he's going to pass. That's the road to Lagos now. All right. And then you set out your journey and you're going. And he may have gone out to plan all kinds of plans against you on that journey. And you're just driving and driving. And suddenly you get to a place and the Lord said, Hey, park here. And then you park. Say, so drive into that place. And then you drive into that place. And like, Okay, Lord, what, what am I doing here? Go, go see so and so person. And then you go see the person and, and you spend some time and, and you do what God wants you to do and you finish and then you come back and continue your journey. Now Satan has just missed you. Because <laughs> he never knew that was going to happen. See? He never knew. He had looked at, he had set out by 9 a.m. Is there hold up on the way? No, hold up. Okay, so by 12 o'clock, he should be at this place. Okay, plan for him. And then God delays your trip by one hour. The devil is not your problem. The devil is never your problem. He has never been your problem. Praise God. It, it, see, it's your, your not submitting your heart to the Lord diligently. That is your problem. And not guarding your heart properly. That is your problem. So I said, the devil will want to attack your heart. Because he knows anything that God is going to do in your life, first of all, he will put it in your heart. So if he can mess up your heart, then he can mess up your destiny. See? Now, let me explain this to you. I told you last week, I told you last Friday, I'm going to try to be as practical as, as possible this week. Listen to this now. God has planned for you to be what do I call it now? Something. Okay, let me use um, politics. That's, it's, it's clear. Maybe God has planned for you to be the president of your nation. Now, you, you receive that information in your heart. You're like, okay. How is it going to work? I don't know. Okay, so now, because of what you're used to already, if God is saying you will become the president of your nation, right? It means you have to start thinking towards politics. And you say, okay, um, maybe God told you this thing early when you were young. All right, so let me go study political science. Question is, did God say you should study political science? Did you ask him for that? 
Okay, you study political science. And then the next thing, you, you, Satan knows he has already seen the direction you're going. And I know what he comes to do. The first thing he does is to tempt you to go ahead of time. I'm talking about your heart now. Satan comes and says, if you're going to be the president, why don't you start running now? Why must you, haven't God said it? Why must you wait? Go and run, go and contest. And they say, it's true, it's true. Let me go and contest. God, God spoke to me that I will be governor. I mean, I think it is now. And then you go and you contest, and then you fail. And then you begin to ask yourself, why did I fail? I thought God told me. I thought God told me. So, okay, maybe it's not this time. He comes again. See, the time, you know why you fail? So, so and so people, they didn't support you. Go and get their support now. And then you go get there. So you say, ah, look, oh, you need to support me. Oh, God say, I say, oh, we'll support you, we'll support you. And then you go again, and then you fail. <clears throat> and then he comes again the third time and says, see, the reason you failed this time because he didn't do this, he didn't do this. And then you go again, and then you fail. Now, when the word of God now comes to you and says, son, get up and run, Satan comes and says, you want to try again? You failed three times. Three times. Even Jesus rose up on the third day. You did not win on the third day, on the third day. You have failed three times. You better leave this thing. Leave it. You will fail again. He said, hey, but God, told, is it not God that told you the last time? And then you begin to say, hey, but God told me. You know, and then suddenly like, you start dragging your feet. You start dragging your feet. And there's a kind. You know what? Let me just leave this thing. Now you see, it wasn't God that failed. Your heart, you allowed your heart to fail. You know why? Because number one, you were not praying enough. Now when I mean praying enough, I'm not saying you didn't have prayer team or you didn't have, I'm, I'm talking about listening to the voice of God enough. Now, even now, someone say, hey, I, I've, I've been in that situation. I know God told me something, but I've tried several times. And then in all those times I've tried, I have failed. Question is, is God telling you now to do it? I'll tell you this for free. If God is telling you now to rise up and do that thing, you know what's going to happen? And, and this is God for you. I will tell you this about his character. And you believe that, hey, I've heard the voice of God and I'm going to do it again. Praise God. And so what about all those times you have failed? I'll tell you what God is going to do. He's going to turn all those failures into great opportunities for you. It will now be, now when you're giving the testimony, ah, this is God now, when you're giving the test, it will now be as though, man, God made me do those elections those times and fail so that I will learn certain things, I will meet certain people. Now I understand why I had to fail those three times. <laughs> yes, that's what God does. He said, but is it not the devil that was leading you? Oh, you don't know God. You don't know God. Before the devil comes to lead you, in quotes, astray, he is fully aware. <laughs> now, if he allows it to happen, oh, hmm, hmm, Ali prodi jagadi zaprando kozefre. Listen, there is no regret in life when you walk with the Lord. Don't you understand? None. He is the one that will turn all those failures as though he was the one leading it and letting you fail. And you don't know that. I've said this many times and I'm going to say it again today. In God's plan for your life, Satan has a role to play. Question is, will you let him play his role? So you stand here and, and, and realize, man, if I had not gone the first time, I wouldn't have met so so and so person, and, and he is now my friend. He, and, and he's the one helping me right now. If I had not gone the second time, I would you oh Lord, there was no devil in this thing. It was God all the way. Yes, 
It was God all the way. Satan was in there. Yes, he was. He was allowed by God because there are certain things that Satan does best. <laughs> God. You don't know that? There are certain things. Who created him? God. So God knows his ability and God uses his ability. <laughs> Praise God. He will use his ability in your life. God will not send an angel to go tell them to suck you at your job. He won't do that. He, no, he won't do that. But you know what? He will send Satan. Hey, Satan, go trouble this, my son, at his, job, at his workplace. He said, eh, really? Yes. What should I do? Just go trouble him. He said, okay, I know what to find out now. Make them suck him. They suck you. And then your eyes are open to great opportunities that God. And I, wow, I never knew this praise God. You know, thank God they sacked me at work. Praise God, our time is up. Listen, there is so much richness in God. Stay with Him and guard your heart. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.